Hey guys, it's Tony Suits with Backwoods Biker Magazine and Wood Tramp Outdoors. A lot of emails, a lot of people approach us when we're out and they ask, are you ever going to look at e-bikes? Hang tight, I'll give you that answer. All right, guys, welcome back. Um, this is the Rad Rover 5. Um, and I, I got to tell you, this has impressed us since the day we took it out of the box. Uh, and when they arrive, I mean, uh, we just wrote an article, a four-page article for the summer edition, a special edition. And we, we included Rad, a, a Rad Power Bikes in um, an introductory articles what we did and one of the things that I mentioned was that over the years I have personally learned a lot about the packaging that people send things to us in if it's cheap and it's shoddy then more than likely the package is too well when these came they were they were packaged like they were a shipping container boxes were stout the graphics was very cool they put a lot of thought and effort into it you know so that was the first thing that impressed us. And then when we took this out of the box, uh, the Red Power Bikes, Red Rover number five, uh, that means the Gen 5, it was just, uh, you know, it was something that got our attention and we just couldn't get away from it. So we're going to go ahead and get kind of close here so we can start talking about what you see in front of you. And we're going to do it uh, probably in, in sections. And I'm going to start with the, the frame and the things that are integrated with the frame, you know, and if I don't do this bicycle correct or e-bike correct, you got to remember, this is our first stab at this. You know, uh, we were virgins when it came to this. Um, and we were skeptical. And I had been very resistant, kept saying, no, 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 no. It's not us. It has nothing to do with what we do. Well, this company has changed my mind. All right, guys, uh, our last video that we were doing uh, while we were on site was corrupted. Uh, the audio jumped in and out, and, and uh, so we just decided to bring it on in here and finish this video, this introduction for you. So <clears throat> what I want to start with is uh, what impressed us right away about this bike, and you're looking at it. It's this heavy-duty aluminum frame, and it's made out of 6061 aluminum, which means that it's very, very stout, uh, but yet it's not really, really heavy. But, I mean, you can see the sexy lines in here. And, you know, the look, uh, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, but the ergonomic shape of this is more than just looks. But it also creates... Uh, a lot of strength especially when you look at the junction of this portion of this down tube with the crossbar here and that weld is super 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 I asked a friend of mine Dave the welder to take a look at the welds on this bike uh, like these here right here at the seat you know here on this back he looked at all the welds and said that all of these would be worthy of hanging off of an airplane on. And coming from him, that says a lot. So this frame is just super stout, but yet it is light enough to be deft, easy to maneuver. Really nice frame. We we're impressed with it. It's just like, like a motorcycle. Uh, especially uh, motorcycle builders will tell you, man, if the frame is, is uh, compromised, I mean, you could end up just... Uh, having your bike fall apart on you on the highway. You know, same thing goes with these whenever you're bouncing through the bush and you're going over terrain, you know, they'll take a beating. That was one of the things that I found out about regular mountain bikes uh, that you try to put uh, a decent load on them. They just can't handle it, you know, so the frame is very, very impressive. Next thing I want to talk about here, we're going to get on down to this thing and uh, just kind of go in alphabetical order, okay? Be easy to do that. Let's start with the brake calipers themselves. Got to get around to the other side here for you. Again, this is an introduction is what we're doing. This is not going to be absolutely detailed. But the brake calipers, 
on this is from Tecto Aries. They're the MD M300s. Uh, and I gotta tell you, these brake calipers are dead on. No adjustment necessary for these when they come out of the box. Maybe down the road they might, but right now um, they stop you on a dime. And it was also impressive that they got front and rear disc brakes. Very, very nice. Okay, the calipers. You now the brake levers themselves, these are made from an aluminum alloy. Um, and they have a motor cutoff switch incorporated with them. Okay, that little bell right there, that's a cool little bell. That's part of the safety features of this bike, you know. It isn't real loud, but it is at a decibel that gets your attention. Okay. Um, brake pad material, we'll go back down here again, is made out of centered metal. The rotors, these are awesome. Now, you remember, you motorcycle riders, you remember back in the day when rotors were solid, they heated up, especially if you were a flat tracker or something like that. You know, if you were uh, a road racer, or even if you were motocross, uh, had an enduro you was taken out in the woods. If you were on a steep uh, decline on your way down uh, with gear on, they would heat up, they would warp. You're not going to have that problem with these because these are designed to throw off heat. Uh, and again, uh, with what we put on, on the two bikes, uh, this bike, when it went out, um, had about 75 pounds, maybe 78, somewhere around there, worth of gear. Bike stopped on a dime, going down uh, into the valley. <laughs> it was no problem. They're never going to uh, warp on you because of, of heat. So let's move on the other side. Let's look at the chain. All right. <clears throat> the chain is a KMC27. Uh, the crank set on this is a 42 tooth, 170 millimeter Pro Wheel Pioneer Forged Alloy Dual Sided Bash Guard. I'm going to try to get that in there for you. You see that? Looks like there's a channel right here. That's because you've got this on one side, you got this on the front side. Very, very nice. Uh, if you happen to come over a log or a rock or whatever, this is going to protect your chain and your front sprocket there. Very cool. The crank set, that is the crank set. Um, let me see here. I was hoping, yeah, we'll talk about the derailleur here. All right, the derailleur is a seven-speed Shimano Acera. Right there is the uh, logo for that. Got a, a bash guard on that. On a motorcycle, you might call that a crash bar, you know, but it protects everything whenever you're out uh, in the bush, riding in the wilderness on, on rugged trails. Um, somebody asked me if seven gears was enough. They felt like 21. Now, that there you go. That's... That's somebody's ignorance that is way out of touch. You know, for a bike like this, you do not need 21 gears. The seven, seven gears that are on this are more than adequate, whether you are humping a hill uh, or you're on a straightaway. They are very, very adequate. They're smooth. Not a lot of bang and, and uh, boom with these and crashing into uh, the, the next gear. It's, it's very, very smooth. Uh, the shifter itself is a Shimano SLTX50, um, and they call it a 7R thumb shifter, which we found this to be uh, a very handy feature as well. I mean, you hardly have to move to execute with this uh, shifter. Uh, it has a thumb button right here is all I'm going to call it. It's a thumb button. So if there's a technical term for that, uh, you boys can put that down in the comments. But all you do is, is you move through the gears up with this, and then you move back down with this button. Very smooth. Uh, let's talk about uh, the fenders here. 
these fenders, as you can see, are made from very, very rigid but yet pliable plastic. I mean, it's really weird the way they put together. Have uh, stainless steel uh, brackets to put them on. Uh, in the beginning, Rad Power Bikes made these an option. Okay. Also on the rear, you see you got your rear fender. They made them an option. Uh, this one flares out a little bit, which is very cool if you're riding through rain, mud, sleet, or snow, whatever. You know, uh, for those of you that are old enough to have ever ridden uh, a chopper from back in the 60s, 70s, uh, you know, we didn't ever put fenders on them. And you know, it was a, just a cool look, but you got water in your face. Um, I even took a rock one time into the forehead coming off my front tire. Uh, made me a little loopy for a second, had to pull over. So having fenders on this will do the same thing as putting them on your motorcycle for all you guys. Uh, and this one here is the same way, it's got a little flare out on that also. Um, let's talk about the fork. The fork is an RST spring fork with 80 millimeter travel. With lockout and preload adjustments, uh, as a 240 millimeter steerer tube. Uh, this is, is the preload is right here. You see this right here. Oops, get that camera around there, dude. There we go. There you see it down in there. That's the preload. And over here is the adjustment that you can lock out or you can make it ride whatever way you want to. And depending on your load um, is where you'll adjust those at. Uh, we talked about uh, the, the free wheel is a DNP 7 speed free wheel 11 34 tooth gearing uh, again is 1 by 7 speed. These grips up here are really nice grips. Love these. They're durable imitation leather ergo. They're ergonomical, right? Uh, the headset is a semi integrated one and eighth inch straight steerer tube that's very very uh, sturdy doesn't there's no slop in it at all the kickstand is a heavy duty aluminum with wide plastic uh, foot which to us you know as being motorcyclists that is a must you know we put this down in in mud sand you don't want your uh, bicycle falling over especially if you've got gear loaded up on it as well Let's talk about the pedals while I'm down here as well. These are, uh, you know, this is one of the things that I noticed when I was riding because I've always had trouble with pedals not being wide enough this way for, for me and not wide enough this way because my foot is wide. And I've ridden this particular bike with, I had sandals on one time, I've had tennis shoes on, and I've had uh, tactical boots and the way that these are put together all three of them work very very well the tactical boots I like those as best for obvious reasons but they've got reflectors on each side of them they have studs all around both sides of them so you're not going to slip off even if your foot gets muddy you know if you get grime in your in your boot tread or whatever um, these are well go B087 CRMO axle forged aluminum platform with reflectors and their standard 9 16 by 20 TPI threading. Okay, um, let's talk about the uh, comfort of this bike, which you know we talked about the front forks, uh, but a big part of the comfort of this bike is these huge four inch tires and. The heart and soul of this whole wheel is this double wall rim that they incorporate. 36H is what they, they put on here. But these tires are made for Rad Power, power Bikes by Kenda. These are the Jogernet 26 inch by 4 inch case shield puncture resistant tire. Let me get uh, a look on the other side as well on this so you can see some of the information that's on the tire right there. Puncture addition, tire casing, and here, here's the secret sauce to that, okay? 
These are made from a layer of aramid and ceramic particles inside the tire right under the tread. Okay, and what, what that does is it, it doesn't prevent major catastrophic punctures. You know, if, if a nail uh, or a spike or a very sharp heavy duty stick, you know, like a one inch stick that is super sharp, you can puncture your tire. But chances of that happening are, are, are pretty slim. Okay. Again, made by four red power bikes by Kenda. But what, what that does for you, um, having the ceramic and the aramid inside that tire, is that it will reduce punctures from small shards of glass, um, twigs, thorns, etc., things like that. And again, it's also a part of the great ride. Uh, that you experience on this and and I'll tell you we we've ridden these without a load you know without any type of a pack or anything on either one of the racks and then we have been out uh, twice uh, in the wilderness with packs on and and I gotta tell you it rides just as smooth with the packs on there you know, and I, I didn't even mess around with the shocks because I only had 70 pounds, 35 on the front, 35 on the back, which was, you know, more than adequate, you know, for us. So the tires are a big part of the secret sauce with this uh, particular bicycle. Also, um, I guess I could tell you about the spokes because these spokes are, are, are very heavy. They're almost as heavy, if not he as heavy, as those on uh, a Harley-Davidson motorcycle. Uh, these are 12 gauge stainless steel and they're in, I don't know if they're anodized black, if they're electric power coated or whatever they are, but uh, it's, it's pretty uh, decent there. Let's talk about the electronics, uh, you know, because that's something that you are going to be using a lot with this particular bike. Um, I don't have, have the key here for this one, but I guess we don't need it. I mean, I can, I can actually tell you what it is. Um, let's start off. Let's start off here with the with the display. Okay, the backlit LCD um, has everything on it that you're going to need when you're out on the road. Um, it'll tell you your your battery health right here. Your battery health here. Uh, your speed will be in here. Your odometer, how much, uh, how many miles you have on your bike, and also, it will tell you, or you can switch back just for a trip odometer. That's one of the things that I didn't like about this display, was that when you shut off your bike, your trip odometer is lost. Okay, so you got to keep track of it if you want to really know what miles you're doing. Down here, the PAS stands for Pedal Assist, um, and it goes from 1 to 5. 1, of course, is the, the minimum about, uh, amount of power, and 5 is the maximum power assist that your bike is going to give you. Uh, very, very handy and of course down here is going to be the amount of watts you're using at any given moment whenever you're pedaling with this power assist on. So the combination of, of the battery life, the wattage that you're using and down here, well you got to have the bike on to be able to uh, see this, but this is where your battery can be checked as well when you're out on the road, okay? And it'll tell you just how much battery life you got left. So this is a very, very handy display that you have here. Um, keep talking about the battery, so let's, let's give this a shot right here. The location of the battery on this particular bike is on the down tube in a perfect spot. It's protected the way it is. Um, and you'll see the difference whenever we do the uh, Rad Rover Step Through One. Uh, it is actually on this riser right here. Uh, but this is a 48 volt, 14 amp hour, 672 watt hours with lithium NMC Samsung 35E cells. Uh, and I was just asked this, how many cycles can you get out of the battery? Well, according to Rad Power Bikes, you can get 800. And I'm presuming, you know, you don't go below 25, you know, 20% 20 at, at the most uh, because your battery starts taking a beating at, at that point. So, 
Next up is the charger itself that I'm not even going to get it out and show you, but it is a very adequate charger. Um, it's a 2 amp smart charger and operates on both 110 and 230 volt uh, AC power. So you can you can plug this in uh, into either one of them. Uh, the controller that we have is a 48 volt 750 watt uh, controller. Uh, the hub motor itself uh, is a 750 watt brushless Bafang gear hub motor with 80 nms of torque which is more than enough with a 5 to 1 planetary gear reduction. I mean you just really can't uh, ask for more than that. Um, let me see, we'll talk about the lights here in a minute. Uh, we've already talked about the pedal assist. It says it's intelligent five pedal assist with 12 magnetic cadence sensor. Okay, For all you um, e-bike gurus out there, that makes sense to you. I just know it works. Um, the throttle, uh, I will talk about that because, you know, if you're a motorcyclist, a throttle is uh, your lifeblood, you know, whenever you're riding. But the throttle on this guy, let me just get this here for you. The throttle on this guy is right here, and it is a half throttle. That's all it is, a half throttle, and very responsive, snaps right back. That's your throttle there. And i got to tell you, you got to be a little careful whenever you're messing around with that throttle. You know, if you're at a standstill and you go to yank on that, uh, if you're not uh, holding on, you might be uh, laying down on the ground. It's got some power to it. Of course the wiring is is water resistant and there are a lot of wires here you know you see the way that they have got this configured I mean it's not it's not bad you know it's just a lot of them but they are water resistant which it makes sense um, I talked about the display and one of the things I forgot to mention is that right here where my finger at is a USB port that you can put a phone in or other small electronic device now uh, okay, we'll talk about the lights at this moment. All right, let's see the lights here. We got a front LED that is super adequate. Uh, the one thing that we found uh, that when you're in the city with a lot of light pollution, you get a lot of washout. It serves its purpose. You can be seen and you can see. But once you get out in the bush where light pollution is not a factor, this dude will reach out and touch you a long way and it's nice and wide we love the light and we used it when we we're out in the bush now go back on the back side and you have got a brake slash tail light very cool and as I said when you put on your brakes it also talks to the uh, motor to help slow you down but I mean to me this is this is very important when you are out on the road and these bikes are made to ride on on hard road um, in municipalities in urban areas in rural areas off the road you know when you're on the road this is very very important to you so it's a great feature um, let me talk about a few other things you, you keep seeing this rack here I'll talk about these racks in a minute but I did want to talk to you about some of the other technical aspects of this and it looks like I've covered everything that I wanted to cover so far uh, especially on that motor I mean that that motor does the job and the way these the way these are set up is that they're rated at 20 miles per hour and I've had several people tell me hey you know you can you can change that to where you'll get 25 to 30 I don't want 25 or 30 uh, ask Simon, Simon Call about that uh, I've been out um, in the bush with this, I don't know, at least five or six times, uh, just testing it out. And I'm going to tell you, you know, 10 miles an hour in the bush, and you know, <laughs> that is fast. That is fast. You got to be thinking on your feet. And if you're loaded down with gear as well, you know, I'm just wanting to get there. You know, I don't have to get there like lickety split. And most of the time, that whenever I go out in the bush, you know, I don't want to go out like I'm beating a drum. You know, that was one of the disadvantages of going out on a motorcycle whether it's a, a larger Harley Cruiser like I own uh, or an Enduro they are loud and you may as well just have a marching band uh, 
going out in front of you and scaring all the deer off or whatever other animal you might be going out to hunt or even if you're not hunting you're making a lot of noise you know I didn't make it make mention of the saddle while I'm here I better uh, this is a velo plush and uh, what makes this uh, a very desirable seat is number one it is comfortable um, a couple of our guys have said that they would put a gel pad on them you know or whatever but it's it's you know it's not bad the way it is I like it but what I like most about this is that you can adjust the seat to go up and down you can adjust the seat to go forward and backwards and of course with the quick release down here you can take it up and you can take it down um, and I have it down almost all the way uh, to uh, dead zero down there um, and the reason is is I'm 5'9 uh, and whenever I step over this bike it doesn't touch my crotch but it's real close so I like to be the ability to be able to adjust this seat back and forth it makes a big difference now while we're continuing to look at this bike a little bit let me go over some of the more technical things with this that you might be asking yourself and then I'm getting this straight from rad power bikes recommended rider height is five foot four to six foot two the frame size is 18 inches the handlebar height is 46.5 inches the handlebar reach is 16 inches the seat height can go from 28 inches to 36.5 and of course this is measured from the bottom of the pedal stroke um, standover height is 30 and a half inches total length of the whole bike is 75 inches and it has a 45 inch wheelbase makes you very sturdy when you're out uh, dropout width for the front is 135 millimeters and the rear is 170 millimeters bottom bracket shell width is 100 millimeters with a square taper bottom bracket the seat tube is 18 inches top tube length I don't know what effective means but they say it's 23 inches the head tube is 5.75 inches the handlebar width is 700 millimeters or 27.5 inches the crank length is 170 millimeters the seat post diameter is 27.2 uh, the maximum tire width is 4 inches the bike weight is 69 pounds and the payload capacity on this is 275 pounds uh, and that does include the rider as well so if you like I weigh 200 pounds I can put 75 pounds of gear safely on this bike you know and this is this is a little guy right here that I failed to mention forgive me forgive me forgive me but it works with the display the middle button is your on off or mode switch uh, and the top and the bottom uh, buttons let me just show you here this is the one that turns it on and switches the mode this will give you more power assist this will give you less power assist if you want to turn on the lights you press the top and the middle button at the same time you know so that's that's basically it you know for all the features on this guy and again uh, this is just to give you an introductory from our perspective uh, I did want to make mention of these racks that you see these are not standard these are optional racks you're looking at the back rack right now and the pack that I put on this was the Falcon uh, 4000 from Kelty uh, and it weighed about 35 to 40 pounds somewhere around there and then on the front I've got this rack and these racks were recommended to us by our rep from rad power bikes uh, and I put on the wax canvas John pack bucket style pack and it had 35 pounds of gear on it you know so I wanted to stay at around 70 75 somewhere around there and I felt like I could put more on the bike and not compromise any handling but of course you know you would have to put the majority of your weight back here on the back instead of on your front forks uh, because it will affect your steering um, something else that I'll make mention of because this is cool you know for those of you that are Harley riders uh, you know this is like a fixed fairing whenever you turn your wheel your basket doesn't move because it is attached to the front of the bike just like a fixed fairing 
You know, I don't like it on the motorcycle, to be honest with you, but I love it on this. You know, when you're going through the bush and you're turning, it makes a difference. So that's it for now. So there you have it. You know, I mean, what, what can we say any more uh, about this particular bike um, that we haven't already? I mean, we covered all the technical aspects of it. We covered, you know, the fact that it is rugged, it's ready, it's road ready, it's bush ready. You know, every place that we've ridden it from the Shawnee National Forest uh, to the Mackinac River Valley here uh, and all around, you know, um, the uh, step through, you'll be seeing that also, the step through model. Um, it, it's been ridden a, a, a little bit more than, than what this model has here. Uh, but, you know, both of them are, are very, very adequate. So that takes us to the question, um, who in our community uh, would I, and I'm talking about the Backwoods Biker community, the Wood Tramp Outdoors community, who would I recommend this to? Anybody that's going out into the bush. Because you can have a much better experience uh, riding out, having a, a new generation pack mule, than you can if you just hump your gear. Uh, the older you get, the more that you'll appreciate that. And you can believe me. You know, humping gear at 19 years old as a as a marine is a whole lot different than it is humping it today for me and anybody that is has been in the marine corps or any branch of the service and now you're a little bit older they'll say amen to that we can recommend this not only to motorcyclists who are looking to put um, an option in their arsenal this would be a great one or they're wanting just to switch out which i've had a lot of friends um, a lot of people in our community have mentioned to us, you know, I'm wanting to get rid of my motorcycle, but I won't have anything to ride. Well, now you do right there. Anybody around the world, if you want to, you know, put this in your, in your garage, it'd be a great add to you. Hunters, fishermen, preppers, survivalists, uh, deer hunters, especially uh, that are going out for a hunt and they want to be stealthy. You know, a lot of guys ride the, the uh, quads out. It's just loud. You, you may as well just shoot guns in the air on your way out and hoop and holler. With this e-bike, you won't do that. It's very stable out in the woods. It's, <clears throat> it's easy to handle. Um, and again, the payload is whatever you want to make it to be up to 275 pounds, including you. Now, what is the price on these? $14.99 is the starting price, um, and options like the front rack and the rear rack that we have on this model, uh, we got different racks on the step through that we'll be showing you here in future videos and future articles. Um, but they're not overpriced. I'm, I'm just telling you, this direct consumer company has has figured out uh, that they're going to get more people interested in their product by being a direct to consumer company. We, we uh, also represent another company um, that has, has done this for years since their inception. And, and I got to tell you, it, the, the amount of savings that they give you is phenomenal and it drives more people to their products. You know, so Rad Power Bikes, uh, you've got that down for sure. So anybody that's out there that's looking for an alternative, these bikes will do it. Um, so. You know, I've been on here for a long time, but I wanted to give you all the information. Um, in the future, you're going to see us out in the woods on these bikes. You're going to see the step through in action as well. Uh, we'll be taking these uh, out uh, several times between now and when winter hits. And we're also, we also have a winter hunt that is planned that we're going to be taking out at least one of these, if not both of them. So make sure you follow our channel. And you keep up with Backwoods Biker Magazine. We're, we're just, we just released uh, our 2020, summer 2020 special edition. We cover a few COVID questions, um, survivalist questions, you know, prepping for survival. What do you got to do? And we also have a four-page article on the Red Rover 5 and the Red Rover Step Through. Both of them. Uh, in an introductory article. So, you know. We appreciate you always watching our videos, reading the magazine, emailing us, letting us know what you think uh, along the way. 
Uh, we appreciate you uh, supporting us and uh, look forward to meeting you all, whoever can make it out to our classes or out to the rendezvous where we might happen to be at. Uh, so until next time, hit that subscribe button, become a subscriber. And when you do, we'll put you in our database and you might get some free gear. You know, we give gear away every month. So until the next time, no matter what you're riding, you ride free, you live free, and as always, you be safe, especially right now. This is a bad time, but we're going to make it. Thank you.